Hi guys, I'm Ranger Lindsay, and today I want to share with you my love for Lepidoptera, the insect order of butterflies and moths. So the term Lepidoptera comes from the Greek word lepido, meaning scale, and terra, meaning wing. Um, and if you look closely at the wings of a butterfly or moth, you'll see these flattened overlapping hairs that look like scales. Um, and that's where the name scaly wings comes from. Caterpillars are the larval form of butterflies and moths. After hatching from an egg, a caterpillar spends about two to four weeks just eating and growing until it's ready to become an adult. When it is ready, the caterpillar builds a protective casing around itself. Then it produces an enzyme which digests its body into this liquidy goo except for a group of specialized cells which will become the building blocks of its new adult body. When the caterpillar is ready to emerge and the transformation is complete, it comes out as a butterfly ready to start the next advanced phase of life as an adult. While this caterpillar is posing very nicely, um, let's see if we can talk about caterpillar anatomy. On the head, we have several simple eyes which detect changes in light, strong jaws for cutting through the plant material the caterpillar eats, and sometimes a spinneret, just like a spider. Directly under the head is the middle body section called the thorax, followed by the last body section, the abdomen. The thorax has the caterpillar's true legs attached to it, which survive the metamorphosis into a butterfly or moth, while the abdomen holds the caterpillar's prolegs, which do not survive the transition to adulthood. Without joints or segments, the prolegs aren't real legs, but they do have a small circle of gripping hooks on the end that kind of look like a tiny suction cup, and these prolegs help the caterpillar to keep its grip on leaves and bark. Butterflies in any life stage have lots of predators. Eggs are often laid in concealed locations, but caterpillars appear in an amazing variety of ways to either conceal themselves from predators or to actively deter predators with bad scents or bad taste, large eye spots, or even spines and horns. To catch a butterfly, you will need a butterfly net. If you don't already have one of these at home or know where you can get one, they're easy enough to make with just a few basic items. Mosquito netting or tulle would work great for the net. You'll need a frame to hold it open, like a wire coat hanger that you could twist would be ideal. And then you'll need something to attach the net to um, as a handle. Something like a wooden dowel would be perfect. Once you've got your butterfly in the net, it's up to you to figure out how to get it into the jar the best way. Usually I would hold up the net so I give the butterfly somewhere to fly to and then bring my jar up to the top of the net and meet it there. The butterfly did exactly what I thought it would and flew up the net, so I brought my jar up there and now I just got to get the cap on. And there you have it, one butterfly in a jar. Once your butterfly is safely in the jar, you can look in your guidebook and see what you have. If your butterfly won't land, it's helpful to put a leaf or some sticks or something in there so it'll hold still and you can get a better look at it. Now I found a page in my guidebook that kind of looks like the butterfly I've got in my jar. Based on the pictures, the seasonal information, and regions, I think this is a Carolina satyr. If I'm wrong, I've got a few good pictures so I can let this guy go and figure it out later. Alright little buddy, you're free to go. We've met this butterfly before. This is the zebra swallowtail. Come on. Are we friends now? Butterflies primarily eat the nectar from flowers using a long straw-like tongue called a proboscis, which curls up when not in use. To obtain minerals they can't get from nectar, you might see butterflies sipping at mud puddles, a behavior called puddling, which is more often seen in males than females. Butterflies and moths also might eat from rotting fruit, tree sap, or even manure to get the minerals they need in their diet.
Even during the day, you might still run into moths on your butterfly walk. This one here shows us some key differences between the butterflies and moths, starting with the antenna. Note how these ones look kind of feathery or comb-like the whole length down, while butterfly antenna are more long and club-shaped, with like a bulb at the end. Both species smell with their antenna, but moths have the stronger sense of smell. When not in flight, moths also tend to hold their wings flat on their back like this one is, while butterflies will bring their wings straight up to touch when they're perched, unless they're spread out soaking up the sun's rays. There's a lot of love out there for pretty little butterflies, but I am a huge fan of moths myself. Twenty twenty is the year of fire burning to conserve in North Carolina state parks. So how does burning benefit butterflies? Well, the flowers that adult butterflies depend on need a lot of sunlight to grow, which can be hard to come by in a mature pine or hardwood forest. Fortunately, frequently scheduled, low-intensity prescribed burns help clear out the middle layer of forest understory and allow the sunlight to go from the canopy and reach the flowers growing down below. Another way burns can help butterfly populations is by reducing the fuel load on the forest floor and helping to prevent catastrophic wildfires to help preserve this habitat for generations to come. Butterflies can flourish in both rural and urban environments as long as they have the food, water, and shelter they need to thrive. Although butterflies can get nectar from a variety of sources, Consider planting native species, which provide both nectar for adults plus food for hungry young caterpillars. The booklet Butterflies in Your Backyard is a free online resource from the NC Cooperative Extension that contains lots of helpful information about planting your yard for butterflies. I'll leave you now at the park office with the Eastern Tiger Swallowtails. If there's one message I want you to take home today, is that the wonders of nature can never be locked up beyond your reach. Nature's splendor is all around you, and you can be an explorer, a scientist, naturalist, or advocate for our planet, whether you're in a park or your own backyard. We're all each other's neighbor on this beautiful planet together. And happy belated Earth Day! Woo! Yeah! 50 years strong! Woo! Till next time, guys. Check out our free at-home activities, ID guides, and much, much more on the ncparks.gov website under Educator Resources.